Muted. as an archived webinar in the future. Okay, so thanks for attending. This is our Did You Know webinar on uh, to inform customers about 3D offerings and MCAD Collaborator through PADS. So first I just want to start off uh, just a little bit about Mentor Graphics. If you're not aware, we offer solutions for PCB design, simulation, and analysis for all of your uh, simulation needs, whether it be thermal simulation or signal integrity simulation. And then also we offer cost savings solutions through the use of our DFM checking tools and analysis tools for assembly. Just a little bit about Oasis Sales. We have been a premier mentor graphics representative for over 16 years, and we are now happy to announce that we are going to be working with Siemens as well with the acquisition of mentor graphics. So we cover the whole spectrum of mentor graphics solutions from PCB design, PCB analysis, all the way to FPGA simulation. A little bit about our technical team. Uh, myself, I'm Kyle Lake. I'm based out of the Portland, Oregon area. And our other technical account manager is Brent Klingforth. He is based out of Denver, Colorado, and he's more responsible for our mechanical offerings, and I am responsible for our PCB tools and analysis. So if you are in our, uh, our sales area, here's our collective sales team. We've got Derek Pop. He's responsible for the Northwest. Lizzie Marsh uh, is mostly focused on the four, four corner states. Andy Bow, uh, Upper Midwest. Pete Achilleos is down in Texas, the Southwest. Rick Truza is the Great Lakes states. And Jason Johnson also covers the Northwest. So if you are interested in pricing or more information, these are who to contact if you're in those respective areas. And we also include an inside sales team. And our inside sales team is headed by Fawn Chang and Dennis Reynolds. And this gives a good picture of exactly what Oasis sales territory really covers. So if you are within this area, again, this is, uh, you, we are your distributor. And we are here to help you find the correct solution for your design issues and help you through the evaluation process and purchase the tool. Uh, we are offering a particular discount on PADS Standard Plus as well as the MCAD Collaborator option that I will be showing today. Uh, it does have this code that you can use and if you do talk to a salesperson uh, until March 31st, you'll be able to use this code to get about 25% off. Here's a great contact for you. If you do have questions after the meeting, we can uh, assist you through this. You can either call Fon Chang at that phone number or use that sales at oasissales.com and we'd be happy to assist. I'd also like to point out that we are going to be hosting a uh, next web seminar. will be on our PADS uh, multi-trace HSD routing. So that will allow us to uh, do multi-tuning, auto-tuning on different traces within your design. And that's going to be happening April 13th, 2017. Uh, at 9.30 Pacific Standard Time. That's the same exact time in about a month on April 13th. Okay, so just a little bit more about PADS and Mentor Graphics printed circuit board design solutions if you're not aware. So here's what Mentor Graphics, there are four different channels that they offer for printed circuit board design and analysis. Expedition, if you're not aware, is the enterprise level tool uh, used by very large companies on complex designs can offer you a lot of data management solutions as well as enterprise bandwidth. PADS is more of a desktop solution. It can do some very incredibly complex designs. Uh, it is capable of doing that, but it is more based for a smaller design team or single individual users. Hyperlinks is the industry standard for signal integrity analysis and veri verification. Uh, it's a very well-known tool. It's been around for a long time. And we are happy to say that you can bring hyperlinks down into both the Expedition printed circuit board design tool as well as PAD. So it's a very flexible solution. It is CAD tool agnostic. It can bring in 
all other design tools such as Altium or ORCAD and Allegro. And the last offering in the Print Circuit Board Systems Design that Mentor has is our Valor tools. And Valor is mostly geared towards checking for PCB assembly, test, and manufacturing. Okay, so if those sound interesting to you, any of these, again, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to assist. I just wanted to throw this slide in here that shows this current trend of printed circuit board design and how it's been just increasing in complexity for the last couple of decades. So you can see the average leads per square inch keeps on increasing while the board size actually maintains about the same size or even goes down smaller. Just as chips are getting smaller, they're packing more and more features on the boards, thus increasing the complexity. A little bit about PADS and how that has evolved in the last couple of years. Uh, PADS has been really trying to be revitalized in the last couple of years and offering you a lot more solutions. Before 2014, it was just PADS, uh, basically a layout tool for the desktop PCB design. It's morphed through the PADS solutions. Currently, we offer PADS Standard, Standard Plus, as well as Professional. And what I'll be showing today is the 3D and MCAD Collaborator. And the 3D is available in all PAD standard, standard plus, and professional. That comes standard with all of those. And then the MCAD collaborator is an option for all three PAD solutions. And in 2016, Mentor introduced the electronics product creation. And I'll delve down into that a little bit further. This is what PADS really brings to the market. It's really differentiating itself that it can really allow you to do anything within the printed circuit board design realm whether that's from schematic capture uh, and routing, which is a very standard feature of PCB design tools these days. It allows us to have component data management as well as library automa uh, automating library creation through tools such as ParkQuest. Uh, we do have the ability to bring in hyperlink simulation capabilities for pre-layout as well as post-layout analysis. Thermal analysis is included with PAD Standard Plus. The ECAD MCAD collaborator is what I'll be talking about today and how that works with uh, different CAD tools such as SOLIDWORKS, designed for manufacturing, again, powered by Valor, and then we do have FPGA optimization as well. These are some new options that were introduced in the product creation platform. Hyperlinks DC Drop allows us to an analyze power planes for DC Drop. Analog mix signal for spice simulation as well as using VHDL modeling. DDR analysis just to ensure that you have uh, the correct timings on your DDR nets. Electrical design rule check is just for EMI issues. And then flow therm XT is for thermal simulation. But what we're talking to today is PADS 3D capabilities. And I'll go into depth a little bit more on this when I actually demo the tool. But I just wanted to give a quick overview of what we can offer through 3D. So with our PADS 3D offering, we can do 3D visualization, and we can actually do placement in 3D. Now, why would you want to do that? If you do have tall components and an enclosure that doesn't give you that much room, you can actually do placement in 3D and see any collisions that might take place between that enclosure and those tall components in the 3D space. We can do concurrent 2D and 3D placement, so we can have the 2D window as well as the 3D open up side by side. We do have the ability to do 3D clearance checking, and that allows us to check between other components, uh, other mechanical objects such as fans, heat sinks, or the enclosure itself. Uh, this can be a batch DRC, so we can run it once it's done. Once we have done all of the placement, and it'll give us a report of what those errors are, or we can have it inline DRC and actually give us visual feedback while we're placing components. So this really allows designers to actually visualize what their end product is going to be before they even have a board made. Just a little bit more about the 3D capabilities that are are included. We can measure in 3D, do cut planes in the X, Y, or Z direction, and again, we can do that batch DRC for the entire design. A very powerful thing that we can do within the 3D environment is actually import and export step models. So step models, industry standard for 3D modeling, 
Uh, we can import other boards if we would like. Uh, again, those enclosures and component models as step. We can also export a 3D PDF, uh, which allows users to give that to management or someone that doesn't actually have a PADS 3D license and allows them to view the board in Adobe Acrobat. <laughs> So the MCAD Collaborator is an option within the 3D, within PAD Standard Plus. Uh, this allows you to have real-time collaboration between the electrical and the mechanical teams. It uses uh, the industry standard pro step format, uh, and that extension is an IDX format. So that allows us to first send a baseline of what the board looks like. The mechanical designer can bring that into their mechanical design environment, and then they can collaborate between the two and say, hey, if we move this component here, will that work for your mechanical team? And then the mechanical team can either reprove, approve or reject that particular modification. And then that's a real-time collaboration, and they can be sending these back and forth. It's very easy to do and very quick. Uh, hopefully this will reduce the design time instead of the old methodology of passing the design, the electrical design over the wall to the mechanical team. Now there's a little bit more collaboration between those two teams. Okay. And with that, I'm going to hop into the demo. And uh, just, just to reiterate, everyone is muted right now. So if you do have any questions, please enter those into the chat window. And I will definitely address those at the end of the session today. Okay. So I'm going to open up a PADS layout design, and I'm currently using a PADS Standard Plus license, if you are familiar with our licensing schemes. So the first thing I want to point out is the ability to have a 2D window of our layout open up by our 3D window of our 3D representation of our printed circuit board. Okay, So we can operate the two independently, or if I would like, I can actually make both the 2D view and 3D view in sync by allowing those to communicate with each other. On the right-hand side of the screen, I've got what's called our display control. This just allows us to tweak different options in the 3D view and turn on or off different design objects. So I'm going to enable drive 2D view and follow 2D view. And again, this is going to allow us to mirror exactly what I see in the 2D space and the 3D space. So if I zoom in in the 2D space, you'll notice that it'll mirror that exact option in, or that exact view in the 3D as well. Okay. And likewise, if I pan in the 3D space, it will pan as well in the 2D. Okay. What I can do with this view open up side by side is I do have the ability to move components, select components, and play around with our placement schemes. I'm going to just turn layer one on for a little bit easier. Uh, I can select a component here and start moving it in the 2D view. And you'll actually notice that that component is beginning to move in the 3D space. OK, so this is what we were talking about, about doing placement in either 2D or 3D. Likewise, I can select a component in the 3D space and uh, move, attempt to move that in the 3D space, and again, you will see that it moves in the 2D space. OK, I'm going to minimize uh, the, the 2D window now and just talk a little bit more about the 3D space. So you'll notice that we do have uh, traces visible as well as our silk screen. We can, again, turn those on or off if we would like to just have a different view. Um, and then I can turn the solder mask as well if we would like to actually see inside of our internal layers. So one of the biggest questions that we get about 3D is how are uh, the models, the 3D models, how are those managed? And I know it can be a daunting task to actually go in and assign new models for your components. So what we can do with that is we can assign the models once and save those back into the library so that mapping is retained in all of your future designs. Okay? But if we do have a model that uh, needs mapping, it's very simple and easy to do. So for example, I'm going to go and zoom in on these resistors. So you'll notice 
that a lot of these components actually have step models defined. Uh, the ones that don't are outlined in this blue kind of DX shape. So what this is doing is actually giving us a rough indication of height, and this height is coming from a height attribute that's actually been placed on the decal. Okay, so when you're creating that decal, you have the ability to go in and enter a height attribute, and this will actually come into the 3D space and extrude it off the board to that, that height requirement. But if we would actually like to import a photorealistic step model onto the board, I can show how to do that right here. So I'll just select one of these resistors. So we have two of the exact same resistors side by side right here. And I want to take note that I'm only going to be importing a step model for one of them. So I'll just click on that, import the step model, and I'll click on this 0402 resistor package. Due to the fact that both of these components here are the exact same part, once I import the model for one of them, it will import for all of those same parts on the board. So say you're working with 100 0603 capacitors on your board. If you import it for one, it will import for all 100, so you don't have to reduplicate your efforts. So I'll just click on Import. And just like that, we can see that it's been imported for both of those resistors right there. Okay, and just a little bit about system requirements for 3D. I am running uh, with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It just makes it run a little bit quicker. And then I do have a dedicated graphics card in my laptop. Um, it is hanging up just a little bit while it's backing up the database right now. Okay, so everything that I'm showing you, I'm operating with just a mouse and keyboard. Very easy to manipulate the 3D view, just utilizing a mouse and a keyboard. I can uh, rotate the board itself, just using shift and then the mouse wheel, or I can pan. Then I can also actually do uh, just a rotation in the same plane as well. So very easy to manipulate. I have heard that it works with a 3D mouse, but I have not actually uh, played with that myself. We also have Snap2 views. I can click on these different views in our 3D toolbar up here that will allow me to just view the top of the board or view the bottom and just really quickly allow us to get to exactly what we want to see on the board. So once we've actually imported those step models that I just did for those components, we can actually take a look at what they look like in the library right now. So I'll open up our Manage Mappings dialog box and you'll see uh, that these are all of the maps, the mapped models that we currently have. And the thing that I want to take note of is this mapping column right here. This shows that uh, most of these step models have actually been pushed back into the library. So like I was saying, once we have them in the library, anytime we use this part in a future design, we can just go and grab that model from the library. The tool will do that all for us automatically so we don't have to go and remap those models. I can enable cross-probing and actually pick through these, and this is the model that I just mapped, and we'll see that it does, in fact, have uh, those capacitors, or those resistor models right there. If we do actually want to take a look at the 2D and 3D representation side by side, what I can do is I can select a component, right-click, and edit the decal. This will actually bring in the decal into the pads decal editor, and it allows us to see both the 2D and the 3D representation side by side. So if I expand, expand the 2D window again, you'll see that we see the decal footprint in the 2D space on the left-hand side of the screen, and then the 3D representation on the right-hand side. Uh, within this decal editor, we can actually adjust how the models are aligned to the footprint. So if they don't come in perfectly on all of the pads, uh, then you can actually go in here and do some manual adjustment. 
Okay, so I do see a question from uh, Andrew Brown, and this is just a relevant question that I do want to address. If we do want to actually push all of our saved step models back into the library, um, we can use this icon on the 3D toolbar that says push or save models to library, and I'll show that once it redraws the 3D view. Okay, so once that 3D view is redrawn, uh, in order to save the models back into the library, all we have to do is say update library. And this will open up a dialog box and allows you to actually select which models you want to save back into the library, and then they will be saved to that library. And again, in future use, those parts will automatically be mapped for us. So I do want to talk about uh, importing mechanical models as well. So what we can do here is if I click on import mechanical models, these are our different models that we do accept in PAD 3D currently. Okay, so I have gone in and actually imported a step model for our enclosure, and I've actually turned off the visibility for it. So if I turn that back on, you'll see that we do have this step model enclosure and the board fits perfectly inside. Obviously, I do have some transparency turned on and that can be adjusted as you see fit. Um, if I click on this, I can actually adjust that transparency on the fly and just allow us to actually see the enclosure as an opaque enclosure as it would be in real life and see how the board fits inside. So I'll turn that transparency up a little bit more because it is helpful to see the board inside of the enclosure. What I can do in conjunction with this enclosure being imported is I can actually add cut planes to our design. And what a cut plane is, if I add one in the X direction, is it just does exactly what the name says. It cuts the plane in that X axis. So this can be helpful if I actually want to narrow down our view and actually see exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so this allows me to adjust the location and then also adjust the rotation uh, in both the Y and the Z direction. Okay, so very powerful and easy to use. I can also add cut planes in multiple directions if I want to add one in the Y direction as well as the X direction. Very easy to do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn that enclosure off. A very important feature in 3D capability is the ability to detect clearance issues between components or the enclosure. And the way we can do that is just look at our 3D clearances icon on the toolbar. And this allows us to define clearances in the X, Y, and Z direction. So I've created a rule from any component to any other component. And this allows us to define a minimum X, Y, and Z direction as well as an optimal X, Y, and Z tolerance. Okay, so why this is important, if I actually go ahead and attempt to move a component in collision with other components, it will turn, I do have to turn DRC on first. If I move this component within uh, a collision with another component, you'll actually see that they turn red. So red means that we are below our minimum threshold that we define of 10 thousandths. If I get within that optimal threshold, which was, if I get within the optimal threshold, uh, the two components will turn yellow, showing that we're in that minimum to optimal threshold. It does also detect clearances between multiple components. So you'll see I'm in the yellow threshold with the BGA but then that red threshold with that small cap right below. Okay. So like I said, this is our inline DRC checking. We also have the ability to do a 3D batch check. And this batch check just really uh, runs through the entire board and checks for any clearance issues. And I'm not going to go into ahead and do that. It does take a few minutes uh, to re generate that report for us. Okay. 
Just a couple other features that I would like to point out within the 3D space that are available. We do have the ability to do measurement capabilities. And what I can do here is measure a point-to-point -point distance. And what I can do once I click that, you'll actually see a magenta outline on my cursor. And that's just showing where I'm going to measure from. We can actually look down a little bit further and actually go off a lead of this pin and measure from there to this capacitor and it'll give us the distance uh, in our design units. So very uh, easy to adjust which face you're measuring from. Also we have the ability to do a minimum distance measurement so I can click on this other ruler that allows me to first select one component and then hover over another component and it just gives us the minimum distance between those two which can be a very helpful uh, measurement to know as well. Okay. Okay, so one of the last features that I want to just show off in 3D, some customers find this very helpful if they're doing blind and buried vias. Uh, if, if your technology doesn't really use that, it might not be that helpful. And then also for very complex plane strategies, it can be helpful to verify that. And what I'm talking about is this z-axis scaling. And what z-axis scaling does is it takes the board and just blows it out in the z-axis direction at the scale factor currently set. So we have a scale factor of 10. I'll click on that z-axis scaling. And you'll see that the board just gets very fat in the z direction. Uh, now in order to turn that off, I'm just going to turn off the board. And it will actually allow us to see the internal via structure and plane structure that we're working with. Again, uh, we can just delve down and manipulate our view so we go look inside of the board. But this can be helpful, like I said, if we're doing stacked vias or blind and buried vias for those complex technologies just to verify that you have your stack up correct. All right, so that was all I was going to show with the 3D capabilities within our tool. Um, I do want to show a generated 3D PDF as well, so I'll go ahead and open up that. Uh, so our export capabilities for this particular board is shown here. So we can export a step model for use in your mechanical tools or a 3D PDF for just JPEGs and PNG files. And then we do have the ability to export uh, copper elements such as pads, plate, traces, and planes. And then you can select which traces you want to output or which ones you don't. Okay, so I'm going to open up, I believe this is a 3D PDF of a, of a, diff a different board, but I just want to show how we can actually view it in the 3D space and then we can actually manipulate the view as well. And you'll see I did export this with that z-axis scaling on. That's why this board is so fat. What we can actually do is export it with the enclosure as well, and we'd be able to see the enclosure. I can select different components, and then we can actually turn those on or off as you see fit. So just a very powerful solution that allows us to exchange design data with management or anyone that would like to view the design with, that doesn't want to require a pads license or installation to do so. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and hop into our MCAD collaborator option. Again, this is an option that's available through PAD Standard, Standard Plus, or Professional. And what it allows us to do is work with our mechanical team in very tight collaboration that allows us to help optimize the component placement or the board outline or anything to do with uh, the mechanical aspects of our design. Okay, so I've opened up just a little bit simpler of a design just to optimize how quickly uh, SolidWorks run, runs on my machine. And in order to invoke the MCAD collaborator, I open up first a 3D view, and then I invoke our MCAD collaborator tool.
So within the MCAD Collaborator tool, we'll see uh, all of our components reference designators on the board currently. And again, I do want to go through the setup really quickly and show that it does use a file extension of IDX. This is a pro step format that uh, most major mechanical CAD vendors accept, such as SOLIDWORKS or CATIA. Okay, so those would both work with this particular format. Uh, we can also set different settings for the message path. This is very important. This is where I'm actually going to be placing those collaboration files and allow us to very quickly collaborate between the electrical team and the mechanical team. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is send a baseline. And what the baseline is, is what our board initially looks like. Okay, so uh, everything looks fine. We've done our initial placement in the electrical design space. I'm going to go ahead and click on Get PCB Data and then send it as our baseline. Now we see that this baseline has been sent in the mechanical or in the PADS collaborator. So now I'm actually going to go ahead and hop into SolidWorks. So this is Flowtherm XT. It's another mechanic. It's a mental graphics offering for thermal simulation, but it does run off of SolidWorks, so that it will definitely suffice. How it communicates with our electrical tool is through CircuitWorks, and this is included in SolidWorks and CATIA and all of our and most mechanical tools. So CircuitWorks will allow us to actually read in that mechanical data or the electrical data. So with CircuitWorks installed, I'll do open ECAD file. This will allow me to actually point to that IDX file that I just created. So this is our baseline again, and I'm going to go ahead and open that. OK, so here is what our CircuitWorks view is. And it shows all of the component placement. OK, so um, what I want to do first is actually invoke a change through paths. And I'll show how that's done. So we've got our initial placement, and the mechanical team is aware of that. They're designing their enclosure around what our board looks like currently. I'll go back into paths. And now, say I want to just move U5. I'll do a rotation, and then I will move it up to this location as well. So now instead of a baseline from the drop-down menu, I'm going to be sending a proposal. I'm going to propose this change. It might be late in the design cycle, but we just need to make this change for whatever reason. Now I will hit Get PCB Data again. And we'll actually be able to see where that component has moved. So you'll see U5 is very natively just rotating and moving itself to a different location. Okay. So now with that proposal, we can send it to the mechanical team. And we see proposal has been sent. We are awaiting a response from the mechanical team. So I'll hop back into Socket CircuitWorks. And what I can do, I'm going to open that proposal. So we'll see the proposal has been in, that, in our dialog box here. And with that proposal in CircuitWorks, again, I can click on what that, that proposal looks like, and it actually shows where U5 has moved to. Okay. Now with this change, I can, within CircuitWorks, either accept or reject that change. And for this example, I might as well just accept that, yeah, that looks good. It will work with our enclosure. OK. So now what we do have to do is actually build the model into SOLIDWORKS, and then we will be able to change that back into the MCAD Collaborator interface. So this might take just a second. So this is going to. Uh, build out the board that we have in CircuitWorks and put it back into SOLIDWORKS. And then we can actually uh, go and change that back into the MCAD Collaborator interface within PADS.
Okay. So you do have to maintain separate libraries, and it didn't bring in the board outline this time, but that's fine. Um, it does have some of the packages that we have right now. And here, we will see this dialog box come up that says, sync with our ECAD system. And what I can do is actually go ahead and click a note and say, changes look good. And we'll see that the MCAD response.idx. I'll hit OK. And that should go ahead and send that IDX file to back to our PADS environment. Okay. So now back within PADS, we'll see that we have an MCAD response right here. So now we have this response, and what we can do is just apply that response. We'll see now from the response that U5 is stuck at that location, meaning that they have accepted what our change is, and we can go ahead, place it there, and continue with our layout. So just like that, without sending a database or any emails, anything like that, we have successfully transferred data from our electrical tool pads to our mechanical team. Now they are aware of that change, they have the design data, and that they have accepted it, and we are aware that they know about our change. Okay, so very easy to quickly set, make changes in pads, send them to our mechanical team, and then get their accept or reject back using the MCAD collaborator. Okay, and then vice versa, we can also instigate a change using the MCAD collaborator. We can change components in that mechanical tool and send them to our pads layout, and those will be uh, changed on the board layout as well. So you might notice this U5, uh, we've got just a little bit of ghosting of the graphics, and I can just click a refresh, and that silk screen will actually change to where it is. Okay, so that's how powerful the MCAD collaborator is. Again, this is hopefully alleviating the throwing over the wall technique to the mechanical team, and this is just a little bit more of a collaborative process that helps optimize component placement. Okay, so just to recap, uh, why the PADS and MCAD Collaborator is a nice tool to have. It really allows for true ECAD and MCAD visualization and collaboration. The ProStep format, again, is accepted by most major CAD vendors, and it allows you to really have real-time collaboration between MCAD and electrical teams. And this really helps to alleviate the conflict and interference before the assembly has been finalized and you have to rework a lot of your electrical design. So what we can do is, if this seems interesting to you, we do have the ability to give you an evaluation. Very easy to set up, uh, very easy to work with as well. So if this sounds interesting, please let us know and we can help you get up, set up with an evaluation and help you walk through that. So uh, just for our, everyone that's been curious, a little interesting, is the PAD standard plus pricing starts at around $10,000, and then the MCAD collaborator just under two. So very affordable options and offerings that really will hopefully alleviate your 3D needs. Okay, and like I said, uh, we do have a buy now for 25% off using this code. And if you do have, e or if you have questions, you can either email myself or you can uh, call this number or email sales at oasissales.com. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about again is the save the date for the PADS multi-trace HSD tuning, and this is going to be happening on April 13th at the exact same time. Okay, I do see a couple of questions that have come through, um, and John Wheeler asks, how do you export multiple pin through hole components holes to a step file? Um, well, you should just be able to export those pins using just the export to the step format. Um, and John, this is something that uh, we should probably touch base offline because it sounds like you might be having some issues with that. So I would like to help you out on that. And then Andrew, Brown again asks, uh, will the MCAD collaborator work with AutoCAD Inventor? 
And off the top of my head, I don't know that, Andrew, and I will look into that and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, I believe that's the end of the presentation I had prepared today. So I want to thank you all again for attending. And if you do have any questions or want to evaluate some of our software, please reach, reach out to us at uh, this email here or contact me directly. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day.